Let's look ahead to Tuesday in the NBA. A nice streaming day, a little bit busier than Monday. We've got injuries to look at. We've got streaming options to look at. What's on my radar? And of course, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I was sucking on Chili Dog. And I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball on TikTok at redrock underscore b-ball. And on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. Eight games Tuesday. Let's dig into them. Let's look at some injury updates. And uh, I just want to quickly, before we get started on this, uh, just give a quick thanks to the Charlotte Hornets um, injury reports and the great transparency once again. Um, love what they do. The best in the business. Absolutely fantastic. Um, so shout out to the injury reporting from the Charlotte Hornets. Let's look at what we do know at the moment. We have heard uh, the news that big dick Nick Richards is out for the Charlotte Hornets. So we've got that update. Um, cool. Um, Ty Jerome Milk, he's out for the Cavs. So is Dean Wade. Christos Porzingis is out for the Celtics. Tyler Hero remains out for the Heat. Jaden McDaniels remains out for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Who's going to bang through all of these because I just did an injury show earlier today. Maxi Kleber is out for the Mavericks. Amen Thompson is out. Cam Thomas, we thought that he would miss this game and then be back for the next one, and he is officially listed as doubtful for the Nets. So that actually ties straight into what we thought. Miss this one, play the next one is probably likely here for Cam Thomas. And I say shout out to the Hornets because they did the thing. I love when they do this. They listed LaMelo Ball as doubtful. Now, I'm going to sit here and tell you there is zero chance that LaMelo Ball plays on Tuesday. Zero, none. This is PTSD, but for shit that's not important. Because last season, Cody Martin... Terry Rogier got listed doubtful for every game for three weeks. Doubtful every game. What do we do with it? Like, all right, LaMelo Ball's doubtful. Sick. Awesome. Well done. We love this. Awesome news. Oh, that's really good news. It's not because this team lies and they give us no clear answers. So LaMelo Ball is doubtful for Tuesday. There's no way that he plays on Tuesday. I, I feel really confident in saying that. Who knows? Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But the doubtful tag is bullshit. It doesn't mean anything good. It might be three weeks out. It might be two games out. It might be zero games out. Unlikely. But he's officially doubtful. So get your hopes up and get him squished later on. Just be aware. This team does this. They list them doubtful for weeks on end. So don't be surprised if that happens. It might not. But there would be no... If any other team listed someone doubtful, I'd say, hey, maybe two games out. They did this for Gordon Haywood as well. Many, many weeks. Don't be, um, don't be fooled by the absolute bullshit that they put out there. Nikki Claxon is questionable. That is good news, although the Nets sticked us last time by listing improbable and then uh, ruling him out. If he is out, we do look at a Dayron Sharp, Royce O'Neal, Dorian Finney-Smith bump in value. Dennis Smith also questionable for the Brooklyn Nets, and that would have an impact on someone like Alon Walker. Uh, Drewy Holiday is questionable. Zach Levine and Alex Caruso are officially questionable as well. Jimmy Butler is questionable, and he did not practice. That is a... That's not a good sign. I would expect that he does miss. So we'll see that one. That one. Duncan Robinson upgraded to question. Well, that's a good sign. Haywood Highsmith is questionable. So there's just so many weird spots. Like, do we look at Huckers? Still yes. Lowry? Still yes. Robinson? Still yes. Maybe Caleb Martin if Highsmith is out. Like, there's just so many things going on with that team that it's hard to fully grasp what's going on. Chris Middleton is officially questionable with his Achilles. He, If he is out, it does help Leaky Beasley, and he can be someone that we look at who's actually providing good value at the moment. Derek Lively is officially questionable, so that's good news. So uh, Rashawn Holmes' long-term value isn't there, although Holmes was the backup over Dwight Powell in the game that Lively got injured. So deeper leagues, you might still have something there. Keegan Murray is officially questionable, so Chris Duarte's value will, will drop. Thank you for that. Derek White is probable, Bam Adebayo is probable, and Luka Doncic is probable with that thumb issue um, that he had been sporting. So that's where we're at with that. 
Before we do under the lens, and we are going to put Brooke, Brooke Lopez under the lens, I'll give you an update on the back-to-backs. This is the Tuesday-Wednesday back-to-backs. It's the Rockets, the Raptors, and the Kings. And unfortunately, they're shit teams. And not shit in terms of how good they are on court. There's just very little streaming value for players on those teams. And you might find somebody available. But it's like Gary Trent. It's maybe Tari Eason, who maybe doesn't play because it's a back-to-back. Um, in Sacramento, like it's Kevin Herter, it's Harrison Barnes. They're probably your better ones. Trey Lyles, like there's not much as back-to-back options for um, for those two teams. So just uh, just be aware of that. They're the three teams that play the back-to-backs, and it's not particularly strong for us. Today's episode is also, well, not also, it is actually just brought to you by Fangel Sportsbook. As the weather gets colder, colder? Hot and colder means holder. As the weather gets colder, the offers on Fangel stay hot. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. It's got to be $5. Can't put $450. Can't put $550. Got to be $5 money line bet, and you get $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining Fangel, there's never been a better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and they've got all these bet types. You know what they are. They're parlays. There's over-unders. There's money lines. There's spreads. There's futures. There's player props. Fangel has it all covered for you and in an app that is super easy to use. So go to fangel.com slash locked on and tip off the NBA season. Go and have a look at what their odds are for the winners of the in-season tournament, which is coming in about a week and a half. Check out the odds over there. Fangel, an official partner of the NFL, and don't forget to gamble responsibly. Okay, that will um, that'll bring us. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go under the lens with Brooke Lopez. This man has been an absolute legend over the last week or so. And as you're aware, I was not big on him repeating what he did last season. I had him in like the 70 or 80 zone, I think. And at the moment, looks dead bloody wrong. Lopez started out the season horribly, like really bad. The defensive scheme was weird. And we had some worries. What scheme would old mate Griffin put in? And we were not surprised, but we were validated in that where Brook Lopez had two blocks in his first four games. And then the player said, Griff, don't think you know what you're doing. Let's just, let us just do what we need to do, yeah? And they did that. And Lopez has been flying, absolutely putting up ridiculous numbers. In the last week, he's the eighth ranked player minus one rankings. In points leagues, he's 13th, averaging 47.4 fantasy points. These are amazing numbers. This guy's career is one of the most amazing careers in NBA history, I think, with the way that he's had injuries and changed his game so many times. There are a few things here that are worth looking at. And if you could sell high on Brook Lopez, you absolutely would. You probably can't, but you you would do it. Because I look at a few things that has happened for him. He's averaging 23 points over the last four games. So just obviously that's not something that's likely to stay. What is he doing? This man averaged half a steal a game last season, half a a steal last season, 0.6 steals the year before that. Last four games, one and a half steals a game. Triple. All right, going to come down. But let's talk blocks because we know that's what Lopez does. And last season... He went from a 1.2 block player to a 2.5 block player. An insane change at age 34. So we said, he's age 35. Does he keep 2.5 blocks up? They're a very, they're a relatively variable stat. And at the start of the season, he was nowhere near it. And then things went crazy. So he's averaging over the last four games, 3.3 blocks per game. Over the last eight games, 3.9 blocks per game. His block rate sits at 8.1%. That's 99th percentile. Last season, which was awesome, 6.6%. Two years ago, 4.6. This is an insane change in his numbers. I'll get to the blocks back in a second, but his field goal percentage, also out of control. 64% from the field, 41 from three and 78 from two. This man last season shot 53 from the field. The year before, 47. The year before, 50. And while we can think that maybe he is a better field goal shooter than he has been in previous years, this is an unbelievable hot streak that is going to end. It is going to drop. He will not shoot at these numbers. Let me absolute stone cold guarantee you that. He won't. But what I do find interesting is the blocks. Like I said, went from a solid block guy to a very good block guy last season and then just ramped the shit out of it this season. Just ah, taking it to levels that I've never really seen. Well, he's literally never done, but these are insane numbers. These are better than Jaron Jackson numbers. Over his last 16 games, 3.1 blocks. Better than Jaron Jackson last season. These are insane numbers. The thing that I find interesting is, according to Crafted NBA, he's only 78th percentile in contesting shots. So he is putting up league-leading block-type numbers, but not even in the top 20% of actually contesting shots. So his block success rate 
is insanely high. So that to me, again, when we look at even history of what Lopez has done, when we look at just the, the idea of when you're not contesting that many shots, he's contesting some, not that many. This number is not going to be successful on this conversion rate of block attempts versus block success. I just don't think he's great at it. He's really worked into being an unbelievable rim protector. This sort of outcome, this sort of output in blocks, it's just not really going to stick. And when you look at the Z score production from Brook, it's blocks and that's it. Right Over the last week, his scoring's good. It's still less than one Z score. His steals are, are well above where they should be. It's still only at 0.8. His free throws are, are really good. He's at 91%. Well, that's a positive, but... Sorry, not, not his free throws. Yeah, his free throws, 91%. And his field goals are really strong too. But these are just numbers that aren't going to hold. I still think that he, he could be a top 50 player this season. Again, Yahoo rankings will tell you that he's 18th. But you've got to hit the sign. You've you got to say it out loud that I believe Dylan Wright was 50 spots better than Giannis last season if you want to buy those rankings. You have, yeah, that's what you have to do. Um, but there's just a lot here where it's great. We love what he's doing. He's dominating. There are regression red flags. And you can say that I'm hating because I had Lopez low. I did have him low. I do have him on one of my teams. I did have him low. And it looks like I got it really wrong. But this shit won't hold. It can't hold at this level. And it will come back down. And this is just sort of using your basis of numbers and what we've seen happen over many, many years. So great stuff from Lopez. Love him as a player. Great bloke. Unbelievable career. A few things here that are just going to transition out, I would think. And there you go. So let's look at... um, Let's look at the streams of the day. That's where we're at now. Um, with no Porzingis, Al Horford is a really strong option. Even in points leagues, I think Al is one of the better options on the board. Then that might change if other guys get ruled out, but Al has a really strong role here. So for 10-team leagues, for Yahoo points and ESPN, I, points, I do like Horford. For 12-teamers, I'm going to go with Dario Saric. Remember, we're cascading down here. For 14-teamers, I'm going to go with Slammy Sam, Slam and Sammy Hauser, especially if Drew Holiday is out. And for 16-teamers, it is Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Again, a, a, a do less with more legend, but in 16-team leagues, a starter who might play 32 minutes, it's really hard to go past that. Let's look at what is on my radar now. We'll start the first of the eight games. The Toronto Raptors and the Brooklyn Nets. Jakob Pertl's minutes are up. His assist rate is up. His steal rate is really high at the moment. I am not fully committed to trusting Darko Ryakovic to play Pertl the 30 minutes that he probably should, but it is absolutely trending in the right direction, so we need to watch that. For the Nets, I do want to see Royce O'Neal, who put up really good numbers last game. I don't really trust that, but if Claxton remains out, this is something to watch with how they utilize O'Neal. And I also want to watch Daron Sharp in that spot too. In terms of streamers, it is Gaz Trent for Toronto, and it probably is O'Neal, although you could throw Dorian Finney-Smith or Daron Sharp in there if Claxton is out. The Hornets and the Knicks. On Charlotte is Brandon Miller, who I expect will start with Rogier moving across to point guard. Miller's been solid. I wouldn't say he's been spectacular in any area. He's just been solid across the board, and I think he's going to profile as that sort of more balanced Tobias Harris fantasy player than a guy that really excels in other other areas. But minutes and shots should be up. We saw he got benched. When they were healthy, he came off the bench, but now they're not healthy, so he moves back into the starting lineup. So he's sort of going to sit as that sixth, seventh man who gets a boost in value when players are in or out. So we watch what he does in this one. In terms of streams, not much for Charlotte. Is Smith probably with LaMelo Ball out? We can look at. Maybe it's Bryce McGowan's, but probably not. And then Josh Hart in New York, but it's you know, always a little bit of a uh, grab bag of randomness over there. Atlanta and Cleveland. I want to see DeAndre Hunter. Can you do it again, my guy? But more importantly, will he play 40 minutes? Because that's what he played last game. With no Jalen Johnson, it's him and Sadiq Bay starting in the front court, and they don't really have much in terms of forwards. So will Hunter get 40 minutes? Will Bay bump minutes up? How do those two interplay in terms of playing time? And what does it also mean for a Kongwu in his playing time? Well, for Boston, I do want to watch Jalen Brown, because I would say he's been very disappointing this season. Can he get some of the efficiency up, some of the peripheral stats, or is it just going to be resigned to being like not that good compared to where he's been in the past? Um I don't know why I said Boston. I didn't mean to say Boston. I meant Boston's the next game. Sorry. Atlanta, Cleveland. I know you're reading this gun. Josh, what the fuck are you talking about Jalen Brown? Carry that Jalen Brown over the next game. DeAndre Hunter and Max Struess is who I want to watch from Cleveland. Max Struess, the winner soldier, Max Struess. Tons of minutes for Struess, and he's doing so many things that we've never seen. And at this point, I'm just going to believe that they're real. Rebounds and assists are up. He's being used differently to how he was in Miami, and they're playing him a ton. They're using tight rotations, and it's been really good for Struess. In terms of streams, Adrian Griffin, maybe but I'm not super confident with that. And then also for Cleveland, Isaac Okoro, 
Maybe. It looks like he is ahead of Craig Porter Jr., but they're just really piss poor stream options for both uh, teams. This is why I was talking about Boston, because they're the next game, Chicago and Boston. On the bull side, I want to watch Vooch, because it has been, I was going to say disappointing, but I don't think it has been. It's been what I expected. He, his usage is down, his efficiency is struggling, and he just, I don't know, he's, I won't say he's the cause of their problems, because he's not, there's so many problems, but I won't say he helps anything. He's, it's just weird him being out there. The offense gets stuck with him sometimes. Defensively, he struggles. This team's going nowhere, and they need to change something. Let's see if anything changed with Vooch, because his usage was below Pat Williams last game. Let's see if they change that up. And then Jalen Brown, I already talked about. In terms of streams, Pat Williams would be the option if Levine or Caruso are out. And if both are out, we lean heavily into Williams. Not that interested otherwise. And then Horford, one of the better streams of the day, with no Christos Porzingis, even though there's only two games this week. That's fine. This is one game on Tuesday, and we go for it. Milwaukee and Miami is the next game up that we need to take uh, take a look at. And it is Brook Lopez that I want to watch because I, I want to see these block numbers. I want to see these field goal percentage. I want to see these steal numbers. How real is this shit? Like, I'm not ready to buy that that level of production is real. But if he does it again, then we have to start always making incremental adjustments to our evaluation and our projection. On the Miami side, Caleb Martin played a lot of minutes last game. I don't think that Caleb's a must-roster player. But with doubt around Butler... And Highsmith and Robinson, although Robinson looks like he's going to play, there is some value there for Caleb Martin that I don't mind a stream ad for this day. For the streams in this one, Le- Leaky Beasley's been getting, getting good points, good threes and good steals. That's valuable. And then Huckers is a good option for Miami, but Lowry, Robinson, Martin, they've got quite a few different guys that they can chuck out there. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It's also the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's not just you. I mean, it is just you and numbers. That's it. No one else. No one has to interfere in your little um, you know, tete-a-tete with the numbers. There's no uh, thousands of players in a field. There are no sharks or pros going up against you. It's It's projections. And you look at the number and you go more or less, and that's it. Bang it in. You can get these entries done in under 60 seconds. You do between two to six of those individual player projection more or lesses, and you can win up to 25 times your money back. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, an enormous selection of players and stat, type, stat types are available, and that is what makes Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. So go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That is pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. The code is locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Okay, let us get through the next batch of these games. The Oklahoma City Thunder and the Minnesota Timberwolves up next. We want to watch Josh Giddy, not for whether he's going to play or not, because he is, and I don't expect there to be any sort of ruling on an NBA investigation here, but it's more the minutes because they've been down. Now, Jalen Williams is returning. He's ready to go, and Giddy's been playing like under 30 minutes a night, and he's moving to the stage where you could you could consider dropping him. I, I wouldn't just yet. Nothing to do with potential suspensions, but it's the play. His minutes are down. He's not doing enough. He gets benched in fourth quarters, He's moving towards a drop. Let's see what changes, if anything. For the Wolves, Mike Conley continues to be really solid. Not many people are talking about Mike Conley. He's fine. He was very good as a late-round pick. He's providing that value, but he's basically doing sort of what we thought he would do. Hasn't sat any games yet, and I, I do worry that that will come at some point, but he's producing great value there just with limited upside. In terms of streams, Lou Dort has been dropped in enough leagues good that he can be considered at least a stream option, but you know what you're getting. Probably 17% shooting with maybe three steals or the night that he gets 25 points on nine shots. He can do that. That's what he does. That's why he's a stream. And then Nikhil Alexander-Walker might be a stream too. You could look at Kyle Anderson, but I'm having very little faith in either of those guys at this point. The next one is the Houston Rockets. And we look at them taking on the Dallas Mavericks. I do want to watch Jabari Smith because it's been a nice little week plus run from Jabari. The shots are going in. His rebound rate is up. His um, two-point percentage is up. His three-point percentage is up. He's playing more minutes. It's been very, very impressive despite a really slow start to the season. So that's good. Let's see if it sticks. And then for the Dallas Mavericks, Tim Hardaway Jr. I don't think I've really mentioned Tim Hardaway on this show at all this season. He was putting up some okay scoring numbers and hitting threes, but that's all he does. And then when he goes through a cold streak, which he currently is now, he's useless. I don't think that he has to be considered a must roster player, especially when he's struggling. You move on and you stream other guys in, like, and you can find these blokes everywhere. Leaky Beasley, a great example of that. In terms of streams, we do look at Tari Eason and Grant Williams from the Rockets and Mavs, respectively. Eason and Williams, I don't think are 12-team league guys, but you can stream them in when we've got a day like this. 
the Warriors and the Kings. What is on my radar in this one? Well, we we want to do it. Where is Clay Thompson at? He's had a couple of good games. He can score and hit threes, but he's doing it consistently, inefficiently. And I don't think they're ever going to bench him, so I don't think we're worried about that. But we just want to see him looking at least closer to old Clay because he hasn't really done it. And then on the uh, King side, Kevin Herter, it's more about minutes for Herter and role and how much he gets, uh, how much his early game success dictates his playing time. In terms of streams, Dario Saric, but it will be very interesting to see with Draymond Green returning, how do they use Saric? Because his minutes have been up, but if Green plays, does that mean they go with more Looney? That is a key thing to watch here. Saric is still a stream, and then Trey Lyles is an optional stream here for the Kings. You can go with Harrison Barnes, and if Malik Monk is available in your league, well, he's obviously a great option there too, and I'd prioritize him. That is the eight games. In terms of two-for-ones and guys that are rostered in 45% of leagues or under, there's not many. We go to Trey Lyles and Harrison Barnes of the Kings, Jay Sean Tate of the Rockets. That's assuming Tari Eason sits on the back-to-back. Um, Gary Trent and Precious Achua of the Raptors. It's pretty, pretty bleak. But if Herder's there, if Monk is there, you can use them. They're good options on that back-to-back stream. They just don't fit the cutoff that I had here. In terms of chunks, we're looking Tuesday through Friday because Saturday is a 12-game slate, so we're probably not streaming on that day. There is one team that plays three games Tuesday through Friday, and that is the Knicks. So the value there is in um, Josh Hart in particular, Emmanuel Quickly if he's available, and then it's Grimes, Hartenstein, DiVincenzo as options that you can use with the three games in the next four nights, Tuesday through Friday. The other ones that have some value are the two centers in Orlando, Mo Wagner and Gogo Badadze. Throw Cole Anthony in there if he's available in your league, and Jalen Suggs, obviously. And then in Boston, it is Al Horford. Now, they've only got two games this week, the Celtics, but it is two games in the next five nights. So Horford, Hauser, um, and then maybe it's Cornette or Cater if you're in deeper formats, which seems uh, seems not likely you want to use those guys. To round it out, we look at some 10-team streamers for Tuesday's action. We start with Al Horford at the top of that list, then Leaky Monk, Kevon Looney, Kobe White, Kevin Herter, and Sadiq Bay are all options for 10-team leagues. Again, it's a cascade effect. If any of these guys are available in your 12s, you look at those guys too. If we look at a more 12-team league specific list, it is Sharich, Kyle Lowry, Sammy Hauser, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Caleb Martin, and Malik Beasley. And then we move on to deeper league formats, again, cascading down. Trey Lyles, Royce O'Neal, Joshy Richardson, Isaiah Hartenstein, Luke Cornett. I don't feel super confident about Cornett because they could go with Cater like they did last game. And the big ragu himself, Dante DiVincenzo. To get out of here, we're going to look at points league streams for Tuesday. Al Horford sits up there, Duncan Robinson, Sadiq Bay, Dario Saric, Jaime Huckers, and Josh the Hitman Hart, and they are all available in over 50% of fantasy leagues. And guys, that will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And if you are here on YouTube, thumb it up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.